So on Tuesday, Deshaun, you said that you, at times during games, or before games, better yet, you get scared, or should I say butterflies, before a big game. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was more of a, I guess, uh, depending on who we playing, it's just kind of like a little starstruck, you know, because, you know, these are guys that, you know, I'm playing against, you know, Tom Brady or, you know, Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck, guys like that that I've been watching since high school. It's been doing crazy things that's, you know, been, you know, my role models that I've been, you know, trying to achieve things they've been doing, you know, for the longest. And now, you know, I'm on the same field with them, which is pretty cool. But, uh, you know, so it's a little butterflies and, and just kind of just, you know, getting the feel and the energy of the game. But once the game starts, you know, I'm all focused on my team. Is it butterflies the night before the game? Is it? I like to say scared, though. Right, right, right. Know, is, <laughs> it, is it during the game, pregame warm up? I mean, it's probably pregame. I guess pregame. Uh, you know, during the week, the night before the game, I'm chilling. Uh, I'm just vibing. You know, not really. You know, you know, just finding my peace, my calmness. But once you know the game is, you know, once I step on that field pregame, and I can feel the energy of the crowd and just you know, the anticipation just before the game starts, that's when uh, you know the butterflies come. How can you draw from your college football playoff playing experience to wild card weekend? The biggest thing is, I mean, you win or go home. I guess that's the biggest thing. Um, as far as like, you know, experience and, and just kind of, you know, playing, it's a whole different ball game. You know, it's a whole different level. So this is going to be brand new for me. The game is going to be faster. The energy is going to be up higher. But uh, I'm up for the challenge because uh, this is what I've been, you know, working for. On three start. How did you get to where you are today? Belief, faith, you know, just grinding. I mean, each and every day, just trying to take it one day at a time, win one day at a time, win one week at a time, and just kind of, you know, put our head down and grind. Don't listen to the outside noise. And just focus on us in that locker room. Become, you know, tighter as a brotherhood, as a chemistry, um, you know, for the team. And that's what we did. Was it one of those fake moments what, that I like to say, rah-rah right. moments where, oh, we're going to call a team meeting and everybody get together and try to figure out what was going wrong at 0-3 to get it turned around. Was there one of those type of moments that took place? Nah, none of that. Because we all knew that, you know, those three games came down to, you know, just little plays, you know, about five plays in a game that, you know, it was self, self-correction. You know, little things that we, you know, been working on our training camp and, you know, we messed up on. But, you know, nah, it was just everyone getting on the same page. Maybe a team meeting that, you know, coach always come in on Mondays, you know, and, and say something. but. Everyone just had to do their job and, and take care of their, their responsibility before, you know, talking to the whole team. Your style of play is way different than you would say the norm in the National Football League, what they look for at the quarterback spot. Right. You've been knocked down, hit, beat up a little bit, 62 times sacked. How do you feel when those sort of things happen to you? Man, it don't bother me. I mean, you I'm frustrated just, though? You mad? You I, might get, I might get frustrated on certain stuff, but at the end of the day, I just kind of, you know, it comes with it comes with the game. You know, those guys over there get paid too. Um, you know, especially the D linemen, they get paid to make sacks. And you know, only time I really get frustrated if I, you know, make a, uh, I miss a mic point, or you know, if I make the right mic point and you know we don't sort out or something like that and miscommunication, uh, that's when I kind of get frustrated. But you know, I kind of encourage those guys. But at the end of the day. Yeah, it don't bother me because you got to finish me. I mean, you got to make sure I'm not walking before I, you know, not be on that field. Do you look at some of the other quarterbacks that you're similar to, whether it was the pass of Michael Vick, the Cam Newtons of the world, the RG3s, or whatever the case may be, with their style of play getting beat up so much and not necessarily getting the calls that they deserve? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, I, I think that happens sometimes um, just because of, I mean, you – the, I guess the refs assume that they're going to get out of a play or since they're running and you're going to treat them like a running back or a receiver and not the guys that kind of just sit in the pocket and don't really run much. But uh, I don't know, I guess, you know, I haven't been in the league long enough to kind of, you know, go pick a side. When you look at the coach defense, what do you see that's there that you may be able to take advantage of? They do a lot of zone coverages. So being able to, you know, use my eyes and, and move the linebackers and, and let make sure the receivers get their depth and, and their uh, you know, position in the routes, defining the holes. And then, um, you know, we got to establish the run game. We can do that. I think we can really, you know, exploit that defense. Having faced Andrew Luck a couple times now in your career, what stands out about Andrew Luck? He's a fighter. He never gives up. The game is never over. And, uh, I mean, he be slinging that thing. I mean, he just throws it 60 times a game. Uh, you rarely see him frustrated. 
he just kind of just keep fighting back, keep battling. So the game is never over with him, you know, especially when we're going, especially for myself. You know, I always got to make sure when I touch the ball, I got to get something going, you know, make sure get points on the board or flip the field so you know, our defense can kind of stall him. Bill O'Brien, your head coach, worked with Tom Brady, handles Tom a certain way, handles you a certain way, and other quarterbacks that he's worked with. Right. What stands out about him in terms of those sort of things? He's a guy that can, you know, interact and, and adjust to different people. Uh, especially their personalities. You know, like you said, he handled Tom Brady a different way. He handled, you know, Tom Savage a different way. He handled myself a different way. So um, I guess whoever is in that, you know, quarterback role in that quarterback room and the guy, you know, he can make, he can adjust and, you know, play his role and, and teach uh, based off that person's personality. I've been around coaches that have coached a lot of great players. Bill O'Brien obviously coached Tom Brady. Does he ever use something to needle you that Tom may have done in the play calling that he thinks that you should be doing where he would say, well, Tom would do it that way. Does he ever come uh, at you like that? No, nah, he don't come at me like that. He might show, we might watch some film, you know, I might ask him some questions. Hey, how Tom, you know, did this, or he read this. We might throw some stuff on, on film, or he might give me like little pieces of what, you know, Tom used to do, you know, as a young guy, or I think at that time, he was like in the middle of his, of his career, but, um, that he kind of got with the guys or like, you know, different formations, different like cadences and stuff like that, but not, not as far as like, hey, you need to do it like Tom. So, so, in, other words, <laughs> so in other words, he's just coaching football. He's yeah, not yeah, trying he's just coaching. to. He let me be me. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's a good thing. He let me be comfortable and do what I do. Does he ever try to motivate you in any type of way, comparing you to other quarterbacks? Or he's he's got to have something there that gets your juices flowing. He might throw some guys out like Andrew Luck. Or, uh, you know, really the biggest guy is, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Just the way we kind of come, uh, you know, approach the game, as a, especially as a quarterback. We're calm, you know, real poised, you know, not really loud, loud, but when we need to, we can, you know, speak up. Take me back to 2017 in the national championship game. What do you remember about that particular game, a certain play in the game? You know, when I think about that game, really how the game started off, you know, Bama was a, you know, we played on the year before, and they didn't really know too much about me. Um, but they knew, you know, coming in the second time around, they had to hit me. They tried to take me out the game, try to get me frustrated some type of way to kind of, you know, control because everything kind of went through me. And as I go, the team go. And uh, if once I get frustrated, they knew that it kind of, you know, flushed the whole team. But um, I kind of knew that going in, especially early on, you know, a couple of hits that I took. Um, you know, I had to make sure that I keep a straight face and make sure that I'm motivating everyone else and that I'm getting right back up. What did it feel like Clemson 35 year drought from winning the national title to you finally grabbing that trophy right. and holding on to it? What was that moment like? I mean, it was crazy. I mean, it was, I mean, I felt like I was on top of the world. Like I was a, you know, a guide to that university, to all the fan base. Um, I mean, it was one of the best moments and best experiences I've ever had. You obviously have a history with number four being your number, and this is the fourth time Alabama Clemson plays in the national championship. What's that going to be like? What would you tell somebody? How could you describe that? It's a moment that uh, those guys, especially in that, in that Clemson locker room, is going to take advantage of. Um, they know, you know the, 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 the level and the expectations of this game and how big it is. And it's a great opportunity for them to, you know, put themselves on the map, especially the young guys, uh, especially Trevor to set the tone. And uh, I mean, those guys are gonna be ready. And you know, the four is gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna go the Clemson way for sure. Why should somebody watch it? I mean, in every game has been, it's been good. You know, the two I played uh, last year was kind of, you know, kind of went Bama way, but uh, I feel like this year is gonna be a different wave. Um, you know, we got some, some uh, athletes on the offensive side. Defense is playing well, especially that front seven. And uh, I mean, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a slug fight. I just want to shout out to my dogs at Clemson. Um, I mean, y'all have the perfect opportunity. Y'all know how big this game is. Just go do your job, be who you are, and uh, just go dominate. I mean, the ball is in your hands. Go take it.